largest stones of the Great Pyramid are massive. Some estimates place the weight of these largest stones upwards to 70 tons. This includes the ceiling stones of the King's Chamber and the Queen's Chamber. The weight of these massive behemoths is comparable to that of a railroad locomotive. The movement of these massive stones is often considered one of the most difficult tasks the original builders faced when they built the Great Pyramid. Egyptologists tell us many of the most massive stones originated from quarries far from the building site. The most researchers, historians, and Egyptologists agree that these massive stones were moved downstream along the Nile River close to the building site by using barges. But Egyptologists are unable to provide an explanation accompanied with demonstrations of how these largest stones on barges were moved from the Nile River up to the building site. The science of Egyptology has yet to move any 70-ton payload one inch. The way in which the original builders actually accomplished this goal is far more interesting than the unsubstantiated stories provided by Egyptology. At first glance, one would think these massive stones on barges would travel up the series of water locks from the Nile River up to the building site. But this is not the case. These water locks are designed specifically to transport barges which can carry a much smaller payload. The series of water locks are designed to handle 99% of all the stones used to build the Great Pyramid. There are only a few dozen gargantuan stones which weigh in the range of 70 tons. It would not be prudent to build a series of water locks large enough to transport just a few dozen gargantuan stones. Also, it is technically impossible to build a series of extremely large water locks up the side of the Great Pyramid, yet these largest stones must be moved to the building site. Research indicates the original builders created a series of temporary stepped ponds which followed the contour of the slope of the terrain between the Nile River and the building site. These stepped ponds could have accommodated a single massive stone on barge or many stones on barges. The simple animation provided in this video shows five stones at a time being moved through these temporary stepped ponds. Water was supplied to these ponds from the building site. These ponds only needed to be about four feet deep. Therefore, little excavation was required and the ponds were impounded by temporary berms. Instead of using precision masonry and finely built waterlock doors, the stepped ponds were separated by simply creating a wall by backfilling material between two stepped ponds. Let's travel down from the building site along these temporary stepped ponds and watch the fascinating process of moving the most massive stones of the Great Pyramid up to the building site. The process is ready to begin. The temporary ponds are ready. The source water for these ponds was made available by the original builders who supplied water to the construction site. Five massive stones are down at the level of the Nile River, all waiting to begin their journey up to the building site. At this stage of the process, a berm is backfilled between the lowest temporary pond and the Nile River. Water is allowed to fill the lowest temporary pond, which raises the level of the pond as well as the stones on barges. Enough water is provided to partially fill the next higher stepped pond. A temporary wall separating these two stepped ponds is backfilled into position and then the pond with the stones on barges is raised higher by adding additional water from the building site. This additional water also provides adequate water for the next higher stepped pond, allowing for the barges carrying stones to continue their journey. The process continues and another temporary berm is backfilled to separate two stepped ponds. 
Water from the construction site is used to fill the pond that the stones on barges are floating in. The massive stones on barges can now move to the next pond as they progress upwards towards the building site. This systematic process continues. Another berm is backfilled between two ponds and then water is added to the higher pond, raising the stones on barges. In this animation, five 70-ton stones are being moved. This is equivalent to 350 tons. These stones on barges are progressing up towards the building site. The temporary stepped ponds act like water locks as the stones rise higher and higher in elevation. Although not shown, an additional group of stones on barges would already be moving up this series of stepped ponds. These massive stones were already on barges as they traveled from the quarries along the Nile River. These stones continue their journey to the building site, still using barges and the buoyancy of water. This trip through the stepped ponds probably took no longer than a few days to complete. This method is lightning fast compared to the dismal failure Egyptology has provided in showing how these most massive stones were moved. The Great Pyramid was built as planned. The massive stones on barges were brought to the building site during the initial stages of construction. The 70-ton stones on barges were brought directly into the pond and pounded by the casing stones. These massive stones on barges floated on the pond and pounded by the casing stones. They floated on the pond as the surface of the pond, impounded by the casing stones, rose higher and higher as the construction process continued. Those massive stones rested on their barges until the construction process reached the level that the stones would be used. These stones are now entering the last temporary stepped pond. This pond will allow the stones on barges to be lifted up to the level of the pond impounded by the casing stones. When this process occurs, the stones on barges can float into the pond impounded by the casing stones. The last stepped pond and the pond impounded by the casing stones are now at the same level. The massive 70 ton stones on barges are easily floated into the pond impounded by the casing stones. After all of the few dozen massive stones on barges which were needed to build the Great Pyramid entered the pond impounded by the second layer of casing stones, the level of this pond is lower down to the first level of casing stones. Then the second layer of casing stones can be completed. This is accomplished by removing the berms which made up the temporary stepped ponds and then setting in place the last few casing stones of the second level. The original builders were truly geniuses. These massive stones on barges floated on the pond impounded by the casing stones. The level of the surface of that pond rose as the construction process continued. But how was a massive stone, the weight of a locomotive, moved off of these barges and set in its final location where it will stay forever? The answer to that question is the subject of the next video.